How can you create the illusion of a large roundhouse in a small space on your train layout? I'm going to show you how I did just that. Coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. At long last, I have finished building the roundhouse at Evanston on my N-Scale model railroad. Today, I want to share it with you because the techniques I use to build it may be useful to you as you work on structures on your own layout. In fact, sharing the hobby of model railroading is what we do on this channel. So if you're into model railroading, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes on this channel. Now then, the roundhouse. Just as soon as this empty eastbound coal train passes through Evanston, One more thing, I'd like to wish all of you a happy 4th of July. I placed this N-Scale American flag on my layout to commemorate this important holiday. Now then, this is the prototype of the roundhouse at Evanston. The Union Pacific Railroad built this brick structure in 1912 to replace an earlier wooden roundhouse. I am trying to capture the feel of it on my layout. If you've seen my previous videos, then you already know that the Union Pacific stopped using its roundhouse there in Evanston in 1971 and subsequently turned it and the rest of the structures in the railroad complex over to the city of Evanston. And you already know that the city has been renovating the railroad complex for use in public events and as city office space. But if you haven't seen the previous episodes in the Evanston Renovation series, you can go to my Evanston playlist to watch them. I will put a link to the playlist down below. Now this is what the roundhouse looked like at the end of my last layout update. In a word, pathetic. Well, as I continued to work on it, it began to look like this. In fact, this is mostly how it will look to you in this episode better, but still not totally pleasing. And this is what it looks like now that it's done. I'm happy with it now, and I'm happy to be able to share it with you. So how did it go from the way it looked before to the way it looks now? And how could I replicate or at least capture the feel of the prototype in a space that measures only four inches wide at its widest point and narrows down to two inches? That's not a lot of space, even in end scale. There was only one way, by using forced perspective to make it look like it's bigger than it really is on my layout. By trying to create an illusion of the prototype, by combining selected pieces of a Walther's Roundhouse kit with sheet and strip styrene and with photos of the prototype. That's how. I want to say that I have absolutely no talent and very little experience in building layout structures. But if I can do it, then you certainly can do it. Let me show you how. I began by creating a curving facade for the roundhouse. To do this, I used a photo of the roundhouse doorways. I printed the photo out on photographic paper and cut it out. I glued it to styrene with spray adhesive. Then I attached it to the front of the roundhouse. Note how the doorways that are further away appear to be smaller. This is forced perspective that makes the roundhouse look larger than it really is. One detail on the facade of the roundhouse is a shack shown in the red circle. Here you can see the shack in this photo of the prototype. I don't know who built it or why it was built, but it does appear to have been added later on because it's not here in this early photo of the roundhouse and because it blocks the doorways to one or two stalls in the roundhouse. 
Here's a close-up photo of the shack. As you can see, it's in a state of ruin. I call it a shack because I don't know what else to call it. I used this same photo on the facade of my roundhouse. I scaled the photo down, printed it out, and affixed it to the styrene, just as I did with the roundhouse doorways. Sadly, the shack probably will be torn down. It doesn't show up in this architectural plan for remodeling the roundhouse. As I was changing the facade, I also installed a cork foundation under the roundhouse to hold it all together. I used cork to do this because the roundhouse measures 16 inches from left to right, and I didn't have any sheet styrene longer than 11 inches. The cork works just fine. I do plan to install a non-functioning turntable in this space. After creating the new facade, I had to replace the existing roof with a new roof because the shape of the roundhouse was now dramatically different. I used styrene for the new roof. I did not glue the roof onto the roundhouse just yet because I had to install interior lighting first. A clear story separates the two levels of the roof. Clear stories were used in most roundhouses to let in more light. The Walther's kit came with plastic clear story windows like this one. But obviously, I couldn't use these in the sweeping curve of the roundhouse. So I photographed one of the plastic clear story windows instead. Then I printed out a series of these windows, each one smaller than the previous one, to help create forced perspective for the roundhouse. I cut out the windows and attached them to styrene. The flexible styrene allowed me to curve the clear story to match the curve of the roundhouse. But I still did not glue the roof onto the rest of the structure just yet. I applied ground foam along the foundation to disguise the separation between the doorways and the cork. But then I discovered something terribly wrong with the forced perspective of the doorways. Can you guess what it is? Well, you won't have to guess because I'm going to tell you. It's the difference between arrows A and B. If anything, the length of arrow B should be shorter than A. This was so glaring that I had to fix it. Fortunately, it was easy to fix. I simply printed out another photo of the roundhouse doorways, along with another photo of the shack. Then I glued these two new photos to the front of the roundhouse at a different angle from the original photos. You can see the difference that this simple change made. Much better now. Having changed the photos on the facade, I now had to apply more ground foam along the foundation of the roundhouse doorways. This was just the beginning of the scenery that I will be doing in the railroad complex. At this point, I was able to install interior and exterior lighting on the roundhouse. I'm going to show you how I did this using the Woodland Scenics Just Plug lighting system in my next video, because this video is already becoming too long. Watch for it in my next video. As a final step, I glued the roof onto the roundhouse and then applied fine gray ballast to the roof to simulate the gravel you often see on flat roofs. This may not be prototypical in the case of the Evanston roundhouse, but it certainly helped me to hide a bunch of imperfections on the roof. And here it is, finished at last. Again, my goal was to make the roundhouse on my layout look like a full-sized structure in a very small space, and I used forced perspective to achieve this illusion. I hope this video will be helpful to you as you work on your own structures. If so, give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done it yet. You can click over here to watch previous episodes in the Evanston Renovation Series. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.